Hey everybody, Mr. Hames here. You're probably wondering why you're in my fridge. The reason is, is today we're talking about heat and matter. That's why I just grabbed some ice. Let's go do some science. Let's get started. We are basically exploring two essential questions about heat. Number one, why do things melt? Number two, why do things freeze? Now when you think about this, usually your initial answer is something very simple. Like, oh, it gets colder and it freezes. We're not thinking very deeply when we ask it that way. In order to understand what's happening inside the matter, we must first understand things are made of molecules. Take, for instance, water. You can't see, but this water is made of trillions of tiny little molecules. Those molecules in water are called H2O, but these molecules are actually always moving around. A way to test this is take a glass of water and drop a little bit of food coloring in it. Without even stirring the food coloring, you will notice that although it takes time, that food coloring is going to spread evenly around the beaker of water. The dye just shows you where those molecules are going. Here's the other thing. Those molecules will move around faster when something is heated up. and will move slower when something is cooled way down. About a year ago, I tested this out with my daughter, Nora. We took a beaker of hot water and a beaker of cold water and dropped food coloring in each beaker and measured the amount of time it took for that food coloring to spread out. What we found is the food coloring spread out much more quickly in the hot water than it did the cold water. That's because hot things have the presence of something called thermal energy. Thermal energy refers to the amount of kinetic energy or energy in motion, movement inside of a substance. You see, the more thermal energy something has, the more the molecules are moving around. The less thermal energy something has, the slower those molecules are moving. When water is in a solid or ice, the molecules here have such a low amount of thermal energy that they've slowed down and gotten close together. There is no spacing between them. When we add thermal energy, as that ice starts to melt, the molecules start to wiggle around and move more. Space then starts to increase between them. That's why liquids are so freely flowing. If we heat it up even more, those molecules spread so far apart that they've turned into a gas. That's water vapor that we can't see that's kind of floating around this room right now. Now here's the cool part. We've been talking about water just because it's such a relatable substance. We all understand it. But this goes for all substances. Perhaps you've heard about dry ice. Dry ice is the stuff that you saw my kids experimenting from last year's class and making these clouds and doing these fantastic displays. All dry ice is, is it is a gas, or what we usually think of as a gas, that's gotten so cold that it's turned into a solid. So this brick of dry ice that you're seeing is actually solid carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a molecule that usually we think about as a gas because at temperatures that we're used to, it is a gas. There's carbon dioxide in this room right now. I actually exhale it with every breath that I take. We don't know it's there because it's in gas form. It's spread apart flying around this room really quickly. But if we can get carbon dioxide cold enough, just like water, it turns into a solid. Now there's all kinds of cool uh, dry ice demonstrations that we can do. I can get to those in a different video. The point here is, is when you add or remove thermal energy, you can change the state of a substance. Dry ice is a solid, and when you add thermal energy into it, it actually turns straight into a gas. Side note, this is a process called sublimation. 
If a solid goes to a liquid, we call that melting. If a liquid goes to a gas, we call that evaporating. If it goes back to a liquid, we call it condensing or condensation. If that liquid turns into a solid, we call it freezing. We have words to describe what is happening when matter changes states. The last point that I really want you guys to know is uh, why I was in the fridge at the beginning of this video. Well, think of what we do when we put something in the fridge or the freezer. We want to control how much thermal energy is present in that substance. When we add or remove thermal energy, we're actually creating a thermal energy transfer. If I wanted to decrease the amount of thermal energy in a substance, I would put it into a fridge because the surrounding environment has less thermal energy. A substance is going to give its energy away to its surrounding environment. However, if I wanted to increase the amount of thermal energy in a substance, then I would put it in or on something hot, like a stove top. There's more thermal energy uh, in the surrounding environment that is going to travel into the substance. So how does this apply to us being in the real world? Go down into your basement like I am and look at the rafters. You'll see things like insulation in the ceiling. To insulate the air that's inside your home uh, from the air outside their home. And when it's colder outside, it's meant to contain the thermal energy inside your home. It slows down the transfer of that energy trying to get outside your home. Uh, another example is if you're trying to keep a beverage hot. I don't know, a Yeti mug, which are very popular these days, or a hydro flask for water. Those things are meant to reduce thermal energy transfer. That means slow it down. Another thing is we've had a lot of strange weather here lately. Today it's snowing. Two days ago, it was 60 degrees. A couple days before that, there was hail. I made a video, by the way, about hail, if you didn't see last week, that tells you how that works. Basically, weather comes down to thermal energy transfer. Radiation, conduction, and convection. A lot of these processes explain how we're able to predict, sort of, weather patterns that, uh, that change greatly, like they do here in the Midwest. Anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys learned something, as always. I wanna say that I'm greatly appreciative to the people who are sharing and subscribing. Um, I never expected that. I didn't expect these videos to resonate outside of my own classroom, but during times that are kind of unchartered in the coronavirus era, it's nice to see that I'm impacting learners. Feel free to uh, share with your own kids, with your own students, with other adults. If it's something that passes the time in a useful and uh, productive way, then I'm really happy about that. Anyway, as always, I appreciate you guys. Hope you learned something and enjoy your day. Have a great week.